from completely shocking the world by losing over 250 pounds, to developing from an immature child into one of the greatest streamers to ever live, it's crazy to think that some of these creators were some of the most hated YouTubers on the platform. My name's Ryan, and here are 8 times unhated YouTubers became loved, starting off with Nick Akato Avocado. After moving to the States from Colombia in 2014, Nikocado Avocado weighed in at around 155 pounds. However, after renouncing his vegan status, he gradually started eating more and putting on more weight. And to make things even worse, over time, Nikocado would start receiving more hate and became notorious for his gluttony and over-exaggerated breakdowns. Stupid dude! <laughs> Every time he has that red shirt on, he goes crazy, LMFAO. I searched angry fat kid punches hardest, trying to find this and it worked. It eventually reached a point where Nikocado's viewers weren't just watching him having mental breakdowns on camera, they were also watching him literally eat himself to death. This is 7 months later. He's over 400 pounds, he has to wear an oxygen mask when he sleeps. If he continues at this rate, we'll soon be hearing about him having a heart attack. I hope that he will take into consideration losing weight before it's too late. I feel like Nikocado's haters care more about his health than his actual fans. However, on the 7th of September 2024, Nikocado shocked the entire internet by uploading a video titled Two Steps Ahead. In this video, he explains how his weight gain was a social experiment and reveals how over the course of two years, he had lost over 250 pounds and was uploading pre-recorded content of his overweight self. Today, I woke up from a very long dream and I also woke up having lost 250 pounds off of my body just yesterday. People were calling me fat and sick and boring and irrelevant. People are the most messed up creatures on the entire planet. And yet I've still managed to stay two steps ahead of everyone. His video managed to hit over 45 million views and took the internet by storm, with other huge creators like Most Critical making videos on the topic. This moment right here is this generation's I am your father. This is up there with the Darth Vader identity reveal. Perhaps one of the most unexpected things I've seen in quite some time. When I was watching this, I let out an audible whoa. Like I couldn't help myself. My body responded without any other part of me having say so over it. My body itself, my soul was shocked when he took the mask off there. So he gives like a villain monologue that sounds like it's out of the Fallout universe talking about how he's two steps ahead because he had played the villain for so long now. Nikocado Avocado is a perfect example of a YouTuber that was one of the most hated people on the internet, turning into a loved and inspirational creator. No way we get to see Nikocado Avocado lose weight before GTA 6. I always said to myself that, I will get skinny when Nikocado Avocado gets skinny. I now have no excuses. Let's be real, this is what we hope for rather than facing his passing due to complications caused by his heavy weight. It's clear that Nikocado has truly redeemed himself in the eyes of the internet in the same can certainly be said about the next YouTuber on the list, PewDiePie. PewDiePie, also known as Felix, is a Swedish YouTuber with over 110 million subscribers. PewDiePie is easily one of the most influential YouTubers of this generation. However, PewDiePie, on multiple occasions, has actually been one of the most hated YouTubers on the platform. For example, in January 11, 2017, PewDiePie posted a video featuring two individuals from Fiverr holding up a sign with an extremely offensive message saying, to all Jews, as an experiment to test their boundaries for money. <laughs> this of course led to tons of backlash, forcing PewDiePie to release an apology video. I am sorry. I didn't think they would actually do it. I feel partially responsible, but just I didn't think they would actually do it. It might just be my sense of crude sense of humor, but I think there's something funny about that. And I don't think there's a any like actual anti-Semitic thing about it. Again, I think there's a difference between a joke and actual like, fuck death to all Jews. I want to address the biggest issue first, which I think is the whole, uh, guys holding up the sign thing. Uh, I'm sure you've seen it. It's been everywhere. A lot of people loved the video. And a lot of people didn't. And it's almost like two generations of people arguing whether this is okay or not. But regardless of that, I just wanted to reiterate that my intention was to just to show how stupid the website is and how far you can push it by paying $5. I'm sorry for the words that I used. Uh, as I know they offended people and I admit that the joke 
itself went too far. A month later, the Wall Street Journal accused PewDiePie of anti-Semitism and Maker Studios, which was PewDiePie's network, responded to this news by breaking their contract with him. And if this wasn't bad enough for PewDiePie, he also received tons of hate for the infamous bridge incident in September 2017, as on a live stream, he was heard saying the n-word with hard r while live streaming PUBG. What a Jeez, oh my god. And once again, he made an apology video addressing the situation. It, it was not okay. I'm really sorry if I offended, hurt, or disappointed anyone with all of this. Being in the position I am, I should know better. I know I can't keep messing up like this. It was something that I said in the heat of the moment. I said the worst word I could possibly think of, and it just sort of slipped out. And I'm not gonna make any excuses to why it did, because there are no excuses for it. I'm disappointed in myself, because it seems like I've learned nothing from all these past controversies. But by this time, PewDiePie received lots of support and love from the internet due to how authentic his apology was. This is probably the best apology of all time. He doesn't fake cry, he doesn't try to paint himself as a victim, he doesn't make excuses for himself, he admits that he effed up and apologizes for it, and that's the whole video. He doesn't stretch it out to 10 minutes so he can get mid-rolls, it's straight and to the point and I applaud him for that. Best part is the fact that unlike other people saying they will better themselves, he actually did become a better person. However, over the last couple of years, PewDiePie has managed to stay out of controversy while still maintaining his large audience, clearly signifying that he cemented himself as one of the most beloved creators in YouTube history. PewDiePie also got married in 2019, and on the 11th of August 2023, he announced the birth of his first child. Pewds character development from kids are very dumb into I'm officially a dad. Congrats Pewds. Man went from being a teen YouTube content creator, having a girlfriend, married, pregnant wife, to a literal dad. Look how far he has come. It's just very impressive and mind blowing how this man just carried her whole childhood and became a dad himself. PewDiePie is a creator who many would consider uncancelable, and the same can be said for the next YouTuber on this list, Sunny V2. Sunny V2 became famous for making high quality documentaries and commentary, with videos on Nikocado Avocado and Mr. Beast being some of the more popular videos on his channel. However, as Sunny V2 began to grow and garner millions of more views, he received tons of backlash for making over exaggerated drama centered content and slowly sacrificing the quality of his videos for quantity. Uh, let's talk about Sunny V2. A lot of people have already talked about his Mr. Beast Chris video and how insanely dumb it really is. Sunny V2 has has been having some dumbass takes for a while now. I've been, I, I don't know if hate watching is the right word, but like annoyingly watching or begrudgingly watching his videos for some time now. And time and time again, I've been absolutely shocked by the sort of things that he can get away with because of his sort of uh, posh adjacent Australian accent. And the most infamous controversy Sunny V2 has been involved in was about the video he made about Chris Tyson titled, Why Chris Will Soon Be a Nightmare for Mr. Beast. In the video, Sunny V2 explained how Chris's transformation would cause way too many problems for the Mr. Beast brand, as Jimmy had built his entire brand on the basis of staying out of controversy and appealing to everyone. And after Sunny V2 released a video, the entire internet came after him. This is a human being. We're talking about a fucking human being, dude. That's crazy. So I watched it and I was, I, I was in awe about how how shit it was. As well as Mr. Beast responding to the situation directly. Yeah, this is getting absurd. Chris isn't my nightmare. He's my friend and things are fine. All this transphobia is starting to piss me off. The takes I've seen on this situation are absolutely insane. This is one of the most dog videos I've ever seen. Sonny's conclusion practically blames Chris for not taking the Mr. Beast brand into account before transitioning, LMAO. Imagine showing such little regard for the welfare of a human being. Despite all the backlash, Sonny V2 did not go back on his opinions or release an apology and kept posting videos as normal. However, a year later in July 2024, Ava Chris Tyson was exposed for being a PDF file and inappropriately sexting minors. This situation not only proved Sunny V2 right, but completely shot down any criticism or backlash that he was getting about the video he made before. Talks bad about other person, receives hate for it, did not apologize, wins the argument. This man predicted the future, got bashed by everyone online, he didn't apologize, then a year later he came out on top. If this isn't the greatest I told you so moment in YouTube history, I'm gonna lose it. They called him a madman, they tried to cancel him for speaking out. The man was speaking nothing but facts, think they owe this man an apology. In the end, 
Sunny V2 went from being one of the most hated and talked about content creators to being respected and admired for standing behind his opinions and not backtracking. However, unlike Sunny V2, who did not backtrack and apologize for his actions, the same can't be said about The Manny Show. The Manny Show is a comedy YouTuber with over 13 million subscribers and unfortunately for him, during June 2024, he was one of the most hated creators on the platform due to completely abusing the YouTube copyright system by targeting a commentary channel that goes by the name Angwin. But apparently not in Manny's world, because this morning my Manny Show video just got smited. Somebody at the Manny Show team, could have been him, could have been someone else, did not like this video. And the fact that Angwin was following copyright laws led to the Manny Show receiving tons of backlash for what he did. I swear, there's so many people that are abusing the copyright system these past few years. Makes no sense to copyright satirical commentators like Anguin. It's like these people like Spicea and Manny have no balls. Even huge creators like Pyrocynical and Moist Critical commented on the situation. The massive YouTube channel that just aims to fill the shorts algorithm with brain rot content to try and farm subs off of it. It sucks. It super sucks. Copyright strikes are a huge deal. It's more than just the video getting taken down. It affects the entire channel. I'm sure all all of you are familiar with the strike system on this platform, it's the nuclear option. When someone does that, it's a declaration of war, and that's when things get extremely serious. However, despite all the hate thrown towards the Manny Show, he managed to release an apology video that essentially saved his entire career. Ahead of VidCon, I hired an agent to help me manage my monetization sharing, and they went beyond by filing a copyright claim on Enqueen's video and flagging some others. So as soon as we learned what had happened, we immediately contacted Enqueen to see the video, found no issue with the video, and contacted YouTube to reinstate the video and make things right with Enqueen. I immediately fired the agent. He's I also fired. contacted YouTube to remove any claims against any other videos that had, may have been like, what, caught up in this bullshit. Like, but at the end of the day, it is my name on the channel. I hired the agent and I take full responsibility. Like to those outraged by this, I am genuinely sorry with what has happened. This response was seen as perfect by the entire internet as he made no excuses and owned up to his mistakes. Your apology is actually an apology. No weird music, no awkward silence, actually acknowledged the problem, accepted certain opinions of certain people. We need more people like you, seriously. Wow, no fake ass tears, no guilt tripping, no singing, but he actually genuinely said sorry, explained what happened, took responsibility, this is the best apology on YouTube. And luckily for him, he completely cleared his name and is now back to making his regular shorts content with a huge boost in subs and credibility. Now, the Manny Show gained a huge boost in subs, but if we're talking about a YouTuber who's gained an insane amount of subs, it's only right we have to talk about iShow Speed. Speed is a young YouTube live streamer with over 30 million subscribers. He's currently one of the most beloved streamers on the platform. However, things weren't always like this for Speed. You see, Speed has got himself into multiple controversies that either got him banned or made the majority of the internet completely clown him. He got a jump scare from Chica, which resulted in him thrusting at the webcam until his dick flopped out. For example, in December of 2021, on Aiden Ross's e-dating show, Speed featured as one of the contestants trying to win over Ash Cash. However, during their date, Speed would ask Ash Cash a hypothetical question which turned out to be a huge mistake. Say if we're the last two people on Earth and we had to reproduce to make the world continue, would you all uh, reproduce with me? No, because that means our kids will have to intertwine and then their kids, no. Who gonna stop me? I will. If we're the last two people on Earth, who gonna stop me? Speed is his own biggest enemy. Speed gonna end up like EDP when he get older. This is both funny and concerning at the same time. This controversy led to Twitch permanently banning Speed from streaming on their platform. But this wasn't the only time Speed found himself in hot water, as during the World Cup in 2022, Speed received tons of backlash because after bumping into a Chinese man, he repeatedly says konnichiwa over and over again even though he stated he was Chinese. He proceeds to make fun of his dialect by using fake stereotypical Chinese. <laughs> Bro, and now come back, come back, come back, come here, come here, come back. Why you got an Argentina, bro? English, no. Uh, Konichiwa, Konichiwa. No, no, Chinese, Chinese. Konichiwa, Argentina. Chinese, no Konichiwa. Why you trying to fight? 
Imagine if their roles were reversed, Asian racism always being taken lightly SMH. Let's be real, if the Asian guy said the n-word, it would have been a different story. And if you thought it stopped there, Speed got into another embarrassing problem live on stream. On August 17th, 2023, while playing Five Nights at Freddy's, Speed was taken by surprise by a jump scare in the game and proceeded to do this. This clip went so viral that the internet clowned him by nicknaming him I Show Meat. So this is how I Show Meat was made. The moment he knew he effed up, it was only a matter of time with the amount of pelvic thrust this guy does. However, despite all the controversies and embarrassing situations Speed got himself into, I Show Speed is still one of the most loved YouTubers on the platform. Just from the insane amount of love and support he received during his tour of Europe, it's clear that despite all the problems Speed has found himself in, he is a generational YouTuber that has stood the test of time. And although Speed has been on the internet for a while, the next YouTuber on this list has been on the platform for over 10 years. Jenna Marbles, over the span of 10 years, managed to gain just under 20 million subscribers by mainly doing lifestyle, comedy, and beauty content. However, unfortunately for her, she received a lot of complaints and backlash about a 2011 video she released doing an impression of the rapper Nicki Minaj while wearing blackface. It's Nicki Minaj. You know, I think I'm a difficult person to date because there's so many of me. This old video that resurfaced in 2020 made her one of the most hated YouTubers on the platform at the time, with titles and articles saying it's not white people's place to forgive Jenna Marbles for her racist past. But this wasn't the only thing the internet was angry about with Jenna. Another video resurfaced of her being quote unquote racist to Asian people. Hey, Ching Chong Wing Wong, shake your King Kong Ding Dong. Sorry, that was racist. I'm bad at rap songs. And due to all the intense hate she was getting, she released an apology video on the 25th of June 2020 titled, A Message. In this video, she apologizes for doing blackface and explains how she's made multiple of her old videos private as she wasn't happy with her past. The first two things that I would like to address is the fact that there are people that were offended that I did blackface. All that matters is that people were offended and it hurt them and for that I am so unbelievably sorry that this isn't okay and it hasn't existed on the internet for a long time because it's not okay. And after posting this apology, Jenna completely ghosted from the entire internet and hasn't returned ever since. However, her apology was so well received by the internet that she became one of the most loved YouTubers till this day without even posting content. This is seriously the most admirable apology I've ever heard from any public figure. She didn't deflect the blame, she didn't make excuses, she just owned up to everything. It was so genuine and mature. I have so much respect for her and I hope she can return to her platform and move past this soon. It's been three years and I still miss her. I hope she comes back eventually. The person that never deserved to be cancelled. There are even people till this day begging her to return to YouTube. Jenna Marbles ain't ever supposed to leave YouTube. I'm supposed to see her freaking funeral on YouTube. That, that, that's, that's, that's how I feel when I think about Jenna Marbles. I'm like, no, that's somebody that's gonna be on YouTube for, for forever. Jenna Marbles was clearly an unfortunate and undeserving victim of cancel culture, and the same can also be said for the next YouTuber on this list, Pyrocynical. Pyrocynical is a commentary YouTuber with over 6 million subscribers across all channels. However, on October 29, 2020, a Twitter user known as Ivory Rasmus claimed that Pyrocynical grew when he was 15 years old, while Pyrocynical was 19. According to Ivory, Pyrocynical sent a variety of inappropriate material to him, including drawn NSFW and fetish videos. Pyrocynical grew and I have screenshots to prove it. I've been sitting thinking about this stuff non-stop, being angry, confused, and sad that I've had to accept this since I was 15, but I never said anything because I felt powerless. These serious allegations led to multiple videos being made on Pyrocynical and the entire internet trying to cancel him. Even large creators in the commentary space made videos attempting to cancel and prove Pyrocynical to be guilty. What they don't realize is that the one making the false allegations is them. Not only that, but Pyrocynical is a liar. However, Pyrocynical made a response video and made a Reddit post to clear his name from the damning allegations. But let me be very clear. I had absolutely no idea that he was 15. He didn't include his age in his bio until he was 16, but I was not on Twitter between the 28th of December 2016 until the 29th of June 2017. To disprove this, 
I'd actually have to see something to disprove, but there's there's literally nothing. It's a blanket statement of Paracynical groomed me. The only thing I can possibly think of is inviting him and a bunch of other people to an event in the UK. And somehow this got spun as me buying him a plane ticket to fly him out to have with him. He was able to clear his name and debunked any allegations of grooming Ivory. No ads, no sigh at the beginning, no fake crying, actual proof, actually apologized. This is great. This was a proper response. There is literally no definitive proof that Pyra knew the kid was 15. It was irresponsible to just talk about that stuff with anyone, but I don't think it's anything worse than that. He admitted what he needed to. This man is the only one who fought Twitter and actually survived. Pyrocynical went from being one of the most hated YouTubers on the platform for allegedly grooming a minor to being one of the most watched commentary channels. To this day, Pyro still gains millions of views on his first and second channels, and has managed to make a huge comeback from the allegations, and the same can also be said for the final YouTuber on this list, Atrioc. Atrioc is a YouTuber and streamer with over 650,000 subscribers, and on January 26, 2023, he was exposed and caught watching deepfake corn of female gamers. Even bigger creators such as Pokimane and Moist Critical had a lot to say about the situation. People can post whatever they want, and that still means that you need their consent to do certain things, including sexualizing them and then profiting off of it. Someone hasn't already said, it is very clearly a pretty gross and creepy thing to have done, especially because it's not just morbid curiosity that you just clicked on something and saw it. You clicked on it, you paid for it, knowing what you were about to see, and then got it. And then it also stayed open in the tabs. Like, all of that is very bad, alarming shit. Atriok himself came forward and apologized on stream for his actions. Not say for work gifts is 99% if I ever do any f***ing points. It's so weird to say, but... I, I don't know. I just clicked a fucking link at 2 a.m. and I, and it, and the morals didn't catch up to me, and and uh, I'm sorry. I really, I really fucking am. And when he assures me that he'll never do anything like this again, I fully believe that. Why is he apologizing to fans? Apologize to your wife, bro. Bro's crying because he got caught. Him having his girlfriend literally in the background is the most obvious sympathy bait I've ever seen in my life, and it's pathetic people give this dude credit for the bare minimum instead of never supporting him literally ever again. However, despite all the shame this brought upon Atrioc, his community still stuck by him and accepted his apology. The entire situation was dismissed as a huge mistake, sparked by curiosity, and Atrioc to this day is still growing on YouTube and Twitch, and pulls in millions of views every single month.